I will be talking tonight on uh, Caden Live, nonlinear video editor. Um, not going to be doing, you know, intro or anything. This will be just useful features that I've found that aren't completely obvious. So the first one I found, and it's not enabled by default, and it really ought to be, is a thing called proxy clips. Uh, proxy clips are uh, transcoded clips. If you if you feed uh, like a high definition video into your nonlinear video editor, uh, it's gonna unless you have a really really high end machine, it's gonna gag on it and it's gonna die trying to do anything with it. So proxy clips uh, are are compressed down. They're usually like 640 by 480, and they just allow you to work on a lower quality, lower resolution version of it. And then when you uh, render everything back out, you'll get your high end version. So the f what I recommend is you actually go into configuration. And if you go to project defaults, there's a little check mark. And uh, I've got it on on mine. Uh, but uh, you want to check that off. And then it, uh, it's got um, some minimum pixel depth uh, that it'll, because you don't want it to give you a, a proxy clip for absolutely everything. It doesn't make sense to give it standard definition and have it make a transcode of a standard definition. So this will be the minimum pixels that it will uh, it will say, hey, you know, it's bigger than that. Let me give you a proxy clip. So um, once this is checked off, that'll just automatically happen. If you don't uh, have that off and you just want, you know, say you do actually want a high def uh, video to stay high def, but you do want one to be transcoded down, you can right mouse click. This is the, the actual clip up here. Um, you can right mouse click on that and come down to, uh, let's see. Clip, no, uh, where is it, oh, it's already checked off. So you can, um, it's grayed out here, but if you check that off, that uh, it, it'll individually enable a proxy clip for that particular clip. And if you want to turn it off, you actually have to go into properties. And then there's a delete proxy clip down here on the bottom. So. Does it matter how so, uh, large the side, the uh, clip is? No, it'll make a proxy clip for one frame. You know, if you throw in a big image, it'll make a, a proxy clip for that. Or you know, I've put in several hours, and it'll do it as well. But and uh, the, this little P right here, you know, it's kind of blurry. Uh, but there's a P on the upper left-hand corner of the uh, the clip there. That means that there is a proxy clip for that. While while the proxy clip is being created, you can actually continue to edit. You know, for what it's worth, it'll be slow, but you'll see a little bar on the bottom of the clip that shows you how far that it's transcoded. So, yes. To make sure I understand, so when you render this thing, it obviously goes back to the full resolution ones. Correct. The uh, when you render, though, there is a checkbox. If you just want to do a quick and dirty render, there is a checkbox to say use proxy clips. So that is rather nice. And, awesome. and when you do that, how quick is that render? I mean, and you say it's machine. quick. Yeah, but I mean, when it's quick, it's quicker. I mean, so let's say if you render and it usually takes an hour and you do this, it's going to take half the time, a quarter of the time. Um, I mean, I'm using some pretty high-end machines, but it's generally pretty quick. It's like uh, five or ten minutes for an hour, hour and a half, something like that. It's not bad. You know, it's, it, like I said, it's, it's, the, the quality is next to horrible. You know, it's it's enough that you can you know see stuff, slice it up, and and edit. Um, uh, I find that w when I'm doing stuff with the green screen, that I have to turn it off because it's so pixelated that what I see on the trans you know it's I can roughly do it, but then I have to kind of click it on and make sure that it's actually doing what I think it's doing. So I'll I'll go in and turn the proxy clip off for that particular clip and go okay, I got it right. So. Is transcoding, is it all in software or are you using a hardware accelerator of some kind? Uh, I don't know. I think right now it's using CPU. It's their, uh, they've been kind of flipping back and forth in Caden Live between using GPU and not. I think they had some bugs. I think it might currently be turned off. But I mean, it's, it's pretty darn fast just because of you know, how small of a video it's, it's actually encoding. So this is actually what it looked like when I got done with uh, one of the first videos I ever edited. So you can see I've got uh, you know five so layers, an audio channel, um, you know a bunch of slides in there. It's all you know it's all chopped up. And um, but anyway, I actually found that you know, um, you know this is the full the full save. 
I actually found you can actually take this, the saved file and load it into Caden Live as a clip. And then it just shows up as one little clip. All of, all of this is smushed down. You can't edit it anymore. But, then you, but you can actually put effects on top of that, slice that up, and just treat it like a regular video, even though it's actually a save file. The, um, the one little snag I found on that, and uh, um, I, I can't remember how it came up, but I remember it was on the Caden Live mailing list. And one of the authors said, yeah, that's really great, but make sure you turn off proxy clips. Because if the proxy clips are on in the save file, it, the, when you load it in as a clip, it will render it out with proxy clips no matter what that checkbox is set to in render. So yeah, that, um, I do believe that uh, the current version, though, which is uh, 0.9, uh, 0.10, uh, will warn you that the, the proxy clips are on. So that, that's definitely something to be aware of. But that's, uh, that, that's a real nice. Uh, thing that you know, the way I would use that is um, you know with the green screen on here you really have to uh, you know you've got all these different layers going and uh, and trying to keep uh, everything lined up is just really difficult and it's nice to just be able to smash that all into one thing pull it in and then apply the effects that you would have normally had to go through and apply to every single uh, clip and, and whatnot it's you know, really a pain so so you're saying you uh, get the sequence of the video done and then you make it a save file and then you take the green out of the screen. Yeah, you could do that. Let me uh, show, actually load one up and show you what it looks like. Yep. So I'll go in here and just add, add a clip. And uh, I open the exact same file as that other one, which is, I guess it only loads one at a time. But instead of having all of that stuff, now I just have it as if I just added a video. And in fact, I think it'll even go through and make a proxy clip of that. But then you can just drag it down here onto the timeline, and it shows up just like anything else. You know, and it's, it's still doing everything behind the scenes, so it's going to uh, be a little bit sluggish just like it was on the original file. I mentioned, uh, well, it was kind of a pain having to pull in and have uh, apply effect. You know, if you've got this thing, your video that's you know a couple hours long, all sliced up, I was having to go through and I would I would get like you know say the the chroma key, the green screen effect going, and I would have that. Uh, I I would in initially put that on the entire video and then I start chopping chunks out, and it would go through and, and each individual chunk would then have that effect on it. And um, the, uh, it was kind of a pain because every once in a while I'd go like, eh, I think I can squeeze some better quality out of that or tweak the effect or anything. And I'd ha find myself having to go through and tweak it on every single chunk of the clip. And uh, I kept hearing about this thing called track effects, but I just couldn't find it for the life of me. Um, and it turns out that uh, I wasn't doing anything wrong. It's just they only have it available in one small way. Okay, so you know normally if you wanted an effect, you could uh, go to your effects list and either uh, find the one you got here and drag it on, which would apply the effect. Um, get rid of that now. Or uh, the way I was mostly doing it is you right mouse click on the track in the timeline and go add effect and you know pick what you want. Um, do something interesting, pan and zoom. So and that would now allow me to you know move stuff around. Um, the problem and you know th if the track is chopped up, you know I'd have to keep copying that. But what you can do is you can actually apply tracks, uh, effects to the entire track. And as far as I know, the only way you can actually do that is from the effects list. And you have to c get it from here because if you right mouse click on the actual track, it never uh, offers you any kind of. Um, um, the list of uh, effects. And uh, you can also, uh, if you just have a track, you can double click and it, would, it applies to the track. And that's what I was expecting is to be able to select the track, go up here, double click, and have it end up on the track. And oh, they fixed it. There's something new I just learned. So, <laughs> so anyway, now there's two ways. Yay! Um, so anyway, uh, once you have a track effect, um, you get this little yellow star here on the actual track. It'll let you know that there's track effects on there. 
And so if you look on here, the actual, tr uh, the clip itself has no effects on it, but the track does. And that, that applies to everything on that particular track and really will save you a lot of time, especially on, like, on the green screen stuff. I st tend to stick all of my green screen stuff on one track, and that way when, if I want to tweak it, I don't have to tweak every single little thing. Anyway. Now, when you do that, you would, would you render it and cut it up, or would you go ahead and cut it up? <coughs> you, so you have all your green screens on one, you have uh -huh. your effect back there, <coughs> but you don't want the whole, you know, you want pieces out of that whole performance or that whole... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, it depends on the person. Um, you know, the presentation styles uh, for some people is, you know, throw them up there and, uh, and there's not a whole lot of cutting. You know, cut the, the front and the back of it off and it's just a presentation style. Other people like, <laughs> uh, I tend to have to cut him a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Hans is kind of the king of the tangent. <laughs> so, it's mostly just to keep him on task or on topic. <laughs> <laughs> My wife wants that feature. <laughs> so. So um, I mentioned that I, uh, for the green screen stuff, I tend to track the whole thing on and then snip out parts. Um, there's an alternative way to do that. Whereas uh, you've got, if you look down here, you know, I've been, it's been showing video in this area here the entire time. But you may not have noticed that uh, on the bottom here it says project monitor and clip monitor and record monitor. And it's actually been flipping through those uh, back and forth. Let me put this back down here. So if you're, if you're in the clip area here, you'll notice that the clip monitor automatically gets brought to front. And, and this, is, this is playing directly out of your list of clips. This is not being edited yet at all. And, um, and then if you click down here, you'll see the project monitor came on. And this is what's actually being, that is going to be finally rendered out when you get done with it. Um, this was something I, I don't know why I didn't think of it, but uh, if, you're on, if you're in the clip, there's a um, little start area here. Um, let's see what they call that, the uh, set zone start. And you put that down, you know, go down to another spot, hit an end zone, and you can then just drag that on the timeline, and it's just that start and end of where you marked in here. You can also drag that over here, and it'll make it as a subclip of that. And you can just go through and, and keep, you know, keep doing that. You know, here, mark another start and end. And it'll just keep making subclips. And you can actually have all your stuff uh, pre-selected and then just drag those out and, uh, and not have to worry about chopping it out in the line. And the nice thing is, is these are kind of reusable. You know, if you've got something that you're going to be using over and over and over again, just pull it out, and that way you can just drag and drop it in. You don't have to worry about, like, oh, where was that, and copy, paste, and stuff. Okay, so I mentioned, uh, you know, this thing that, uh, that uh, sets the zones here. You can also set the zones on the actual timeline that you're editing. So you can set a start zone and end zone. And that's actually useful for rendering. So if you come up here to render, which for you that don't know, rendering is how you actually make the end video. It's uh, that, you know, you, it'll, it'll go through, takes forever, and you get the, this crystal clear video that's done. Uh, but you have to render that out. But if you, in the rendering, if you look down here at the bottom, it has full project and zone all the way down at the bottom. And if you do zone, it'll just en uh, edit that area that from the start to the stop, which is great when you're doing some effects because I found even with uh, ev no proxy clips, no nothing, I found the rendered out file sometimes looks a little bit different than, than what you get. It's uh, not too different, but it's, it's sometimes worth just a, a quick look or a, a test render to test a codec or something that uh, see if it's going to look okay without having to say uh, I'm going to commit four hours of computer time to rendering out my video. Um, hopefully the four hour thing will go away when they get the GPU rendering back in and, and uh, nice and quick. So now I have two, of, uh, two chunks of this video. One of them has uh, several effects on here and the other one doesn't. Um, and I, I, for some reason I may want, hey, I want both those videos to have the same effects uh, or the same settings or whatnot. So you can actually just come up here to you know, select the video that, you, that has the effects that you want, and you can actually just drag the effect f itself from the video 
and drag it onto the other video and you'll see now that I have the uh, copy of it on that video. Uh, another nice thing is, is uh, if you want to do all these, you can say, uh, uh, where is it? Um, so you have a, you can click on any of the little menu things here on the clips and say create group and you can actually just drag all the effects you want into that and now I have a a group of effects which really doesn't change a whole lot from a rendering um, aspect from what I've seen but you can actually just grab the entire group now and drag that over and then I get all of the effects are now over there and it's still grouped which is really nice and that was the way that was the only thing that was keeping me sane before I found out about track effects because then I just do it once and then quickly drag 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 and uh, get them copied over. This was just a little test thing I made of a video I just happened to have. Um, so the, uh, I was talking about uh, the order of effects mattering. Well, the uh, order f of your tracks matters as well to some extent. Um, the rendering usually goes from top to bottom. So this top clip would get uh, rendered and then this one and then this one. And as you're compositing, you know, making some areas transparent and some not, um, the, they'll they'll layer up. the The problem being is if you you see how this is going, these things are actually moving like this. Um, if they purely composited from top to bottom, the top one would then go on to the next one, and uh, which you know one's going one way and the other one's going the other way. If they would essentially cancel each other out in this case, or or if you have one them going the same direction, they would add up because it's you're you're compositing you know that one onto this one and then it's getting on the bottom. So if you look on uh, these little tracks that are in between the tracks, these are your compositing layers, and it doesn't matter which one you have. The, um, you can you know it's got a whole bunch of different ways to composite, but they all have this with track section on it and so this is saying okay I want to composite with this track and you can skip tracks you can I don't think you can go up tracks but uh, in this case I skipped the next track and went to the bottom and then th this one here also goes it's it's set to auto which is generally the next one down and so these two layers all go directly onto the bottom and skip compositing with each other um, the other reason you would want to make sure you don't do that even if it doesn't mess with each other, you know, everything's just not moving or whatnot is, is that uh, it's, y there's generation loss that occurs, you know, because you are actually compositing and compositing and compositing over and over and over again instead of just, you know, applying the effects and smashing them together like you'd expect. Um, that clear as mud? <laughs> so, any questions on that? I lost everyone. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you ever done a render or uh, one that you have to track and you expected it to do one thing and it did something completely different? That's and you exactly it? where I got this from. Yeah, this is uh, you know, actually, let me show you um, by demonstration. So um, let me rewind this. So this one just plays. It's you know, just l stupid layers of stuff, and that's a really funny video though. Um, so if I come up here to the compositing. And I say, go to the next one down. I'll actually say auto just for kicks. Now I'll play it again and see how they're, they're kind of, one was moving faster, but they're kind of canceling each other out now. Um, so yeah, that's, this one took me a while to find. <laughs> so, yeah, much, much better. Um, the other thing I found that, that, you know, unexpected effects, um, it's come in when you're resizing stuff. So I, um, on a plug video, I, you know, I'll, the, old, the old way I would do it before I got this whole set up is I would kind of film uh, the presenter plus that and I would chop out the presenter and chop out the screen and, and you know, fix the, the uh, trapezoid on the screen and stuff like that. And, um, and I was doing all this resizing and it was just killing me because I would size everything down and it would uh, then all of a sudden it would just not act like I wanted to because it was being sized twice and then uh, I would go and tweak something you know after I I compensated for the sizing the you know it effectively would um, it, it was like scaling down and then scaling back up 
And so I was actually, it was getting the generation loss of, you know, having the B rescaled up. So, yeah, it, it'll definitely catch you off guard if, uh, if you don't get your compositing layers right. When I first started out, it was just the camera, and I was at, uh, we still had the wireless mic, but the, I was plugging it directly into the camera, and the camera had some problems and issues with audio I won't go into. So I, I bought a separate digital recorder, and uh, that's great, um, but, um, but you don't think about, like, how am I going to line the audio up? And uh, it actually turns out that uh, Caden Live's got a really good feature just for that. So a quick question about that. Would you have the entire video you shot and the entire uh, audio that you, that you stored and sync them up first? and then made them for life, and then whatever video you edited, you wouldn't have to worry about the audio? Is that for the most part, yeah, they, uh, you end up just basically grouping them, and then it preserves the group as you slice it. Um, for me, it's actually worse because I record the, uh, the questions in the audience from the center there, and then I have the presenter mic, and they're recording on each side of the right and left channel. And unfortunately, it, I mean, I think this is a major failing in Caden Live. You know, it's not a big deal, but it's it, it would be nice if they would handle this, but it doesn't have a way to split up uh, audio. You can split audio from a video, but you can't split the audio into separate mono tracks. And so I end up having to pull the audio file into Audacity, split it into mono, and now I have two audio files that need to be lined up. But it actually turns out it's really easy to deal with. So... They don't get any echo or any chamber effects because you haven't lined it up exactly right? Uh, well, no, because I uh, get rid of the audio on the uh, video. And so, uh, so this should be audio, I believe. But the two channels, you're using a left and right, right? What's that? You're using a left and right on your recorder. Yeah, but it comes out mono all said and done. So yeah, I, it's, it's left and right coming in, Audacity splits it into two separate files, and then I pull those two separate files in, and one's audience and one's presenter. So anyway, I, I end up with an audio and a video file, and it turns out all you have to do is right mouse click on your master, which will be, you know, I'm still recording audio on the camera itself, and I'm not doing anything special, I'm just letting the camera grab it. And if you right click on the video, you can uh, s do this set audio reference and down at the bottom left corner there it'll say processing audio please wait and this actually goes pretty darn fast hopefully so you don't have to do a, a clap or a unique referencing no that's uh, if you wanted to you could put a marker and I'll go into markers in a little bit so anyway it's done now so now I have this audio file and I will just right mouse click again and say align audio to reference. And then again, it'll say processing audio, please wait. And see, it just moved it. That's and incredible. But how do it know? <laughs> What's that? I mean, what, what, yeah, what is a reference on that? How, how, how do, do it know? know? It's the waveform. I don't know exactly how it's doing it because the, like, the audience mic is super noisy and oftentimes uh, has more audience than presenter in it. And it still lines it up perfect every single time. You know, it's, it's, it's frame accuracy, it's not wave accuracy. You know, because so you have to move it plus or minus a 30th of a second. But uh, yeah, it does a gr just a big so, Wait, this is audio to video syncing, is that right? Correct. Not the two audios together, you've already done that. N yeah, I, I do this, uh, when I'm doing my videos, I do it twice, once for the audio the audience and once I technically don't have to since they both start at the same place I could just drag the other one but you could actually just do it twice I still don't understand there's got to be some reference how does, it, how does it reference it's referencing off the audio from the camera itself you know the, the audio that I've deemed you know too cr crappy to so you do leave the audio that, that the camera is recording yeah. in there and it, it can sync up to that audio I yeah see. I figured worst case scenario the, you know I don't get the audio or something like that it's better than nothing and you know, it does give me that synchronization source. And the audio from the camera is just from the mic of the camera. You don't add a, an extra mic on that camera. No, it's just, um, it's just purely there for reference. And do you use that in the end video, or do you blank that out? What's that? The, the mic on the camera, do you use that in the end video, or do you just... 
No, it's it's mostly a synchronization source and a fallback just in case. You know, ever since I got that digital audio recorder, you'd be crazy not to use that audio. So you just mute the audio, audio in the in your final rendering. You just mute the audio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't you just, bring it live. You just come over here, and there's a a no video which you can click on, and uh, no audio. Yeah, there's the no video, and then the other one locks it. But yeah, once I've got it synchronized, I I turn that off because. Like you said, that it's it's because it's not fr it's frame accurate, not wave accurate. You do kind of get a little bit of a hall room effect, you know, echoey stuff going on, but uh, you can't tell. I mean, the lips are pretty much dead on once you got it on there. So, very very cool effect. Yeah. Okay, and then someone you know before the meeting brought up uh, correcting shaky video. Okay, so I have two two things here. One's already processed. But uh, so if I just hit play on this, I just went out of my way to shake the camera and made it, you know, relatively garbage video. So that's the whole thing. Um, but uh, if you want something a little bit smoother and, and better quality, if you right mouse click on that, there's these clip jobs, and the first one's stabilize, and it's got a few settings, but I found pretty much just hit OK and let it rip. Um, it goes through and processes. It's it's relatively quick when you do that. And then you get the second file that's uh, the name the name of the first one plus .mlt. And the really cool thing about that is that's not a video file. That is literally just uh, an MLT effect. MLT is the, uh, I think it stands for Media Loving Toolkit. And Caden Live is just purely a front end for MLT. And so this is just a little thing it goes through. And it, I think it, for the most part, just has coordinates in it. And it tells it how to move the video around in order to stabilize it. And so it went from, uh, let's see, the original video was 20 megs. Uh, the fixed video is 4.8K. So it's, it's uh, really nice. Uh, so now that I select that, I can play back, see how sm much more smooth it is. You know, you know I'll, I'll play the original just to re for reference. So yeah, it, it does a pretty darn good job. You know, it, do, it, it does have to do a little bit of tricks and stuff, because if you think about it, uh, it, I don't know if it zooms in or what, because you know, it is moving stuff around. And so technically, you should get a border. And so I think there's a little bit of warping and, and maybe zooming and stuff going on in order to get rid of that, the border. Uh, last but not least, let's see, clip markers. Um, I've mostly used them to try to line stuff up. Um, or it, um, like I've got a little device here on the floor that is recording everything that comes out of my laptop. And uh, on, it doesn't have any audio, so I don't have any reference on that way. So I'll find something obvious, you know, where someone does a visual or audio cue as to, you know, changing a slide or pointing at something. And I'll go through and, and say uh, marker, you know, add marker. And so I can add a marker, and that just basically puts a visual uh, mark on the video itself. And so when I get, get that cue, I'll put that on there. And then I'll go into my video that I have of the screen and put another marker where I think that is, and then just line those two markers up. And uh, or you know, you can do whatever you want. You can label it. Uh, uh, I've also gone through and labeled, you know, individual slides, or if you're interviewing someone, you can put, like, here's where the question starts and stops and stuff, just to give you a, a visual reference as to what's going on on the video. Um, the counterpart to that is, is there's actually um, a guide, which is uh, kind of like the marker, but this one goes for the entire track. So that one's kind of in stone. It's not going to move around, whereas if I move this video around, the marker goes with it. But you know, you can add that guide in there if you know, say you want uh, an audio cue to come up at a certain time. You know, you can mark that time and then just line the marker up with the where the audio starts, and you're good to go on that. Yes. Now, if you have multiple reference errors, or when you can go and say, I want to look at Bob one, Bob two, and Bob three, where you can type in look for Bob three. I do remember somewhere, um, I should have put a note, somewhere in here there was a place to actually, it gave you a list of, oh, here it is. 
So if you got your markers in here, you can right mouse click under markers, go to marker, and it'll have a list of all your markers. And you know, just instantly pops in. I believe the thing works for guides. Go to yeah. So you get the same thing with the guides as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can edit the applause so it's longer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Multi-layered. Yeah.